In 2020, we saw a historical reversal of progress in fighting global poverty and inequality, and an increase in the wealth gap between and within countries. We saw a historical wealth transfer from the poor to the wealthy. Workers lost an estimated $6 trillion in direct income between 2020 and 2022, while the billionaires of the world, which are a very small number of people, their wealth actually doubled or nearly doubled and it increased to about $4 trillion. The UN agency, the International Labor Organization, has some great statistics tracking these impacts on the global workforce. And they estimate that global working hours declined by 9% in 2020. And that actually this decline remained to you know, a smaller level, but still 1.5% below 2019 levels at the end of 2022. So there's a group of workers who are still being left behind from any recovery. 113 million jobs were lost in 2020. People were unemployed, unable to pay their bills. And we actually saw for the first time uh, in a century, a decline in what's called the global real wage growth. So the wage of predominantly lower income workers relative to the necessities of living expenses declined. We also witness these historical kind of new class divisions. It's important for people to realize when you were hearing these messages, stay at home and protect lives. And we would ask ourselves, well, how many people can stay home? Well, there's essential workers, there's non-essential workers. We have some pretty good data on this. Only 17% of people around the world, about 550 million people, did stay home and could stay home at the height of global lockdown. Lockdowns, in a way, were a policy for the 17%. We saw a faster recovery for higher and more educated workers and a lower recovery for workers who uh, have less education, less income. Getting back to the issue of inflation, we're seeing inflation outpacing wage growth in 2022 for about an estimated 1.7 billion people around the world. Now, in general, the labor impacts were felt most drastically in Latin America and the Caribbean, Southern Asia and Southern Europe, and among young workers and women. We also saw an increase in labor exploitation, so forced labor and sexual exploitation, although the data for this is somewhat patchy because we don't have year-to-year -year data. So the only report that's available, uh, or the most substantial report available, is a UN document that it shows between 2016 and 2021, there's an increase of a few million people being pushed into forced labor and sexual exploitation. And there's a number of individual country studies that also provide a glimpse of those increases being related to the pandemic recession, but we don't have concrete statistics just because that system of data collection doesn't quite exist in the way that we might want it to. UNICEF also uh, estimates that upwards of 9 million more children were pushed into child labor um, by the end of 2022 because of the COVID recession and the restrictions that were put into place. Again, same thing around statistics, that these, these, this data is very difficult to get. So more, more research needs to be done to understand child labor and sexual exploitation, etc. So I was surprised that I was not able to find a meta-analysis or systematic review on household income effects. But we do have some very good large-scale studies on how pandemic policies impacted people's income at a household level. And in general, these show the large-scale surveys with, you know, 30-plus countries generally show 30 to 65 percent of households suffered financially in 2020. That meant using savings, falling into debt, uh, or just ha not having enough money to put food on the table or to pay bills. And these impacts were highest, again, among youth, women, those who depend on the informal economy around the world, people who are self-employed, small businesses, casual workers, etc. Very few households in low middle income countries received financial support. Uh, the surveys show about 1 to 15% in 2020. There's a big debate about the impact on global remittances, which I'll leave aside here, but you can find it in the report. And we have a limited amount of longitudinal studies looking at the long-term effects of this 
drop in household income around the world. There's quite a number of them that actually relate them to lockdown policies themselves in different countries, showing that the more stringent lockdowns were associated with a, a larger decrease in income, which is pretty self-evident and intuitive. Probably one of the most tragic data points, let's say, in this report, are the hundreds of millions of people who fell into poverty due to the COVID lockdowns and the economic recession that accompanied them. Now, there are different estimates based on models and the available data that research teams use. But in general, there's a consensus, roughly, that about 90 million people around the world fell into extreme poverty, which is about $2 or less a day. Now, there's also a number of hundreds of millions of people that fell below other poverty lines in upper and upper middle, uh, middle income countries. A World Bank report called the Poverty and Shared Prosperity Report, they actually use three different poverty lines, essentially estimate that about 400 million people fell below one of those three poverty lines in lower and lower uh, upper middle income countries. That's a significant a lot, uh, amount of people and falling into poverty has all sorts of impacts on people's health, uh, their long-term education, and their opportunities in life. The World Bank report shows that that increase in poverty, global poverty, has not recovered. It's the same amount in 20, at the end of 2022 than it was in 2020. So we have not recovered. And those 400 million people are still living at an impoverished level because of the consequences of public health policies. Hello, I'm Kevin Bardosh, the author of this report. In episode four, I'll be discussing the impacts of COVID policies on food security, including some shocking statistics. For example, did you know that the number of people in food insecurity increased by 350 million between 2019 and 2022? To watch this episode, please find the link to the series in the description below.